Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Zooming in on the topic of uh, an inquiry from a viewer, essentially looking at um, is the narcissist trait, um, the codependent trait, is that innate? Um, was this inborn? Do people basically, do, are they born with this natural personality trait or is it learned? Um, and I, my answer to that is a combination definitely of both. I you know, feel that there's a predisposition, but there's a lot of dynamics that take place within the individual, absolutely, that goes to create um, and, and develop within that person. And John Bradshaw, um, in his book, Healing the Shame That Binds You, he really kind of uh, maps out um, the, uh, the, the relevance and importance of what he calls, you know, uh, healthy shame uh, that is created in childhood versus unhealthy shame where um, if there's a deficit in the, um, in the mirroring um, of a child or a shaming of a child, that, that uh, creates really an, an essence of foundation of their personality. And so how they carry this with them um, really has a, a certain an interesting impact um, with that person. And so and as people become more mature, they grow older, they, they become to realize this and essentially um, are either open to change, able to change, or not open and not available to change. Of course, um, you know, we hear of certain self-destructive behaviors that people at initially were powerless over that they get power over. Like the alcoholic who is powerless over drinking, then they go through AA and then they, they're able to identify, you know, how this is working in their life. Uh, the Gamblers Anonymous, people who gamble. Um, people who um, you know have debtors anonymous um, there's all sorts of uh, different situations and organizations designed to provide a resource to people um, and I want to kind of go into real quick in his in his book and how um, he takes a look at healthy shaming um, versus unhealthy shaming and how that really plays out and you can essentially kind of see um, some relevance perhaps you know in your life or in your spouse's life or that of your family. Um, and essentially he begins with uh, shameful acting out in the beginning. In other words, um, where sh someone has you know, a great amount of shame. Um, and so they begin, they have certain qualities such as um, less than human compuls uh, compulsivity and obsessiveness. They're essentially a slab. Uh, they you know, oftentimes fail. Uh, they're prone to repetitive failure. They have a, a tremendous, tremendous amount of self-blame, uh, sinfulness, and intimacy dysfunction. Um, they encounter rage, self-judgment, gluttony, self-contempt, and erroneous or lax conscience or no conscience. Um, and you know, where then compared to uh, you know natural shame, where, um, where someone is uh, really has a healthy sense of shame. In other words, they have a healthy sense of their boundaries. He calls it a core of uh, finitude. Uh, they have permission to be human, in other words, to be vulnerable, to know that they have, you know, a weak side, a soft side. Um, there's natural boundaries that are established. They have adequate amount of shame, development of identity and their intimacy along these guidelines. They also possess within this a sense of dignity, and they're able to bring a sense of awe, reverence, and modesty to their relationships. And they also have a critically examined conscience, in other words, they're able to use you know, that, that role of metacognition to really kind of look at where their conscious is and really tap into morality and ethical behavior versus, you know, not unethical or immoral behavior. And then he also discussed shameless acting in, where people possess a more than human compulsivity or obsessiveness, extremely perfectionistic, very controlling, very blaming. Um, they, they operate their life with a tremendous amount of righteousness. Um, and they experience really kind of like an intimacy dysfunction. They might be passive aggressive, where they act out um, uh, passive aggressively. Um, they, ex they operate with a tremendous amount of judgment, uh, self deprivation, criticism, and much contempt, uh, disgust. And they tend to be extremely rigid, all knowing, uh, puritanical, or, you know, what they call a scrupulous conscience. So you can see here, really, in, you know, Again, this is a combination of art and science, and it's each individual is very unique in, in how this portrays and works out. But realize that you know, 
Shame is a healthy um, sense of self-correction, uh, which is modesty, humility, things of that nature. And so people who, you know, have a healthy sense of that are able to, you know, uh, create their boundaries and kind of correct themselves um, and so for the better. And that those who have, you know, a very shame-based personality where they feel extremely shamed and have repressed it, they're more, they're more apt to, you know, develop along those unhealthy um, guidelines and experience a little bit more imbalance in their life. So hopefully you can understand the importance um, and role of healthy shame versus unhealthy shame and how that impacts one's personality, development, things of that nature. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support.